my name is Louie, and in this video, we will be making roasted lamb. Okay, so now we're gonna get started on prepping our lamb. I'm using a boneless leg of lamb just because I wasn't able to find one with a bone in. But if you can find one with a bone in, absolutely go ahead and use it. I believe that it is a bit better for doing this. Uh, so you're going to want to do this whole process at least an hour in advance, maybe. So I'm just going to start with trimming off the original butcher's twine. But because this is boneless, I'm just going to open it up and then lay some of my rosemary. Garlic, you're gonna wanna crush this so you can just do that. Put like the back of your palm of your hand like here on your garlic and then just, and in my opinion, that's the easiest way to smash garlic. And then uh, you wanna put some anchovies in there. It might seem like an odd ingredient to put in lamb, but trust me, it'll taste really good. And it brings a good saltiness to all of the lamb. And if you don't want to use anchovies, you can probably just use salt. Do I think it'll give the same result? Probably not, but if you really don't like anchovies, then I guess you don't have to do it. And then, this was a bone-in leg of lamb. All you would do was, like, prick some bowls with a knife, and then put a little bit of anchovies, like a, one small garlic clove, and then a little bit of rosemary. I'm still gonna do that with this, but probably just less, because I put so much on the inside. Okay, I'm done with my uh, surgery now, so I'm just gonna wrap this up in butcher's twine now. Okay, now that your lamb is all wrapped up, just place it in any container you have. You can wrap it in plastic wrap, that's also a possibility. And just let this sit in the fridge for at least an hour, and I'll meet you when I'm gonna bake. Okay, now that your lamb has been sitting in your fridge for at least an hour, I actually did this for uh, overnight. Uh, you just wanna put on a bunch of black pepper on both sides. And once you're done with the tops, whatever's left on the cutting board, you're just going to roll your lamb all around to suck it all back up. And now we're gonna put this in our roasting dish. Okay, now that you have put on all of your black pepper and it's in a roasting dish, I'm doing a roasting pan with a uh, whatever this rack is. Uh, you can just put like a cooling rack on it, but this is what I'm working with, but you could probably figure something out. It just sort of needs to be elevated. And make sure you're heating your oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and then you're just going to add like a little sliver of butter on top. The juice of one lime or lemon. And then 750 milliliters or one bottle of white wine. And all of the alcohol will be cooked out, so you don't have to worry about it, about getting drunk from eating this lamb. And then you're going to place this in an oven preheated to do 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, you want to turn the temperature down to, um, to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And just keep on checking it checking the temperature with the thermometer to, to your desired doneness. I'm going to shoot for 135, that's uh, medium rare, but then we're gonna sear it, so it'll be more like medium in the end. Okay, uh, I just took my lamb out of the oven, so now what we are going to do, we are going to sear the inside of it and make the sauce using the evaporated wine. Well, not the evaporated wine, but the the wine that we put in. All the alcohol is cooked out and it'll, it'll make a good sauce. Okay, what we want to do is 
We're gonna take all of the butcher's twine off. And now that it's fully cooked, all of the stuff in the inside doesn't really matter that much. So we're just gonna take it out and it's sticking together a bit. So I'm just gonna do uh, some shallow cuts down the center so that it lays flat. And then take out everything that's lying on the inside. And while you're doing that, you wanna get a small sauce pot and put it over heat. And then take around, I wanna say three tablespoons of butter and just start melting it. And what we're gonna do with that is that we're going to create a roux. What a roux is, is it's uh, melted butter and flour mixed together and what it does is that it helps thicken up the sauce. So now we're gonna turn our cast iron on medium high heat and wait for our butter to melt. Okay, now that your butter is all melted, you just want to add a little bit of high smoke point oil into your cast iron and let that heat up for a little bit. And while that's happening, you want to whisk in uh, some whole wheat flour into your melted butter. Yes, you could use all-purpose flour, but I like the color that whole wheat flour gives to this sauce. And it's better to add less flour and then add a bit more than to add too much flour and then have to add more butter. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more now. I'd say I used about an eighth to a fourth of a cup of flour. And this is the exact consistency that you're looking for. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but yeah. And because of the whole wheat flour, it gives it like a nice brown color. If you were using something like all purpose, it would just be white, which isn't bad. Uh, but I, I like the color that this gives in the end product. And there's like this amazing sauce in it. Uh, from the wine that we used and there's also some fond on the bottom of it that we're gonna scrape off and you want to let your roux uh, cook out of it because the flour it'll give a nasty taste if you uh, like do everything at once and now I'm going to drop the inside of my lamb in here And we're just looking to get a really nice sear on this. Now that it's cooked down a bit, I'm gonna put some of the stuff in it for now. We'll scrape off the bottom a bit later. Now, in order to get all of the fond off the bottom of this pan, you're just gonna pour in a little bit of water and then just continuously scrape with a wooden spoon or whatever you wanna use to scrape. And now you wanna pour this back into your sauce. And my sauce is looking a bit too thick right now and that's fine. All I'm gonna do is add some water. Once you feel like you've added a lot of water, you can go ahead and add a bit more butter into it. It'll also get it richer. And now I'm just gonna check the sear that I got. And if I'm liking it, then I'll take it out. Still needs a bit longer, the sear. And I'm going to add some salt into the sauce. Just salt the sauce to your liking. Okay, I'm liking the sear that I got, so I'm just going to take it off. And remember to let your meat rest. A lot of people forget to let their meat rest, and then all the juices just come flying everywhere. Nobody, nobody wants that. So always let your meat rest. It'll also give us a bit more time to continue with our sauce. And after a while with your sauce, once it's fully come together and you like the thickness, 
You're just gonna add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce will like make it a bit more meaty and it'll give it a beautiful like mahogany color. Like you see how much darker it made mine? So if you're using all purpose, you could use, if you want like a really nice color, you could use less water and then add more Worcestershire sauce. And the Worcestershire sauce is optional by the way, you don't have to put it in, but I like it. And then you're just gonna keep on stirring and keep on tasting to make sure that you like it. Okay, now that everything is ready, you wanna get a sharp knife and then just cut it thinly. And then look at that, it's perfectly cooked. Well, to my liking. Okay, once you have some slices, just put it on a plate. And then you just want to spoon on some of your sauce. And boom, you have some nice lime. 